everybody. It is October 9th, 10 a.m. in the morning here on this lovely Saturday. Yay, first Saturday of the month. Yep. Now, uh, we're going to continue on for our podcast on uh, Wednesday. We're going to talk about Ghostbusters. Now, we're going to talk about two uh, aspects of it. We're going to talk about Ghostbusters Afterlife. And I was going to talk to you a little bit about the Ghostbusters video game and how it relates to the other... Uh, um, the pre- right, and how it could, there could be something in they could mention it. I don't know. Okay, now all now, like I sit there and said, everybody, there's actually, and we're not talking about that really really bad 2016 movie. Um, all right, but there's technically, uh, as we know, as I know right now, there is two Ghostbuster universes. Okay. Uh, not to be confused, not to be confused with the filmation Ghostbusters series, which was based off of the 1970s uh, British uh, TV show called Ghostbusters. That's why the cartoon was called the Real Ghostbusters. But the Real Ghostbusters takes place after the first movie, and it's its own universe, uh, which went all the way to uh, Ghostbusters Extreme uh, or Extreme Ghostbusters. In the 90s. Then you have the movies, which is the first one, the second one, and now this one, Afterlife. And, of course, you have the video game, but I do not know the video game is going to be mentioned. So, what do you want to talk about first? I don't care. Okay. Start it off. Okay, so the reason I'm going to talk about the video game real quick is, everyone, if you have not played this one... Grab it, uh, especially for Ghostbusters fan. They have a remaster version that is on the PlayStation Four. I think the Xbox, whatever One X system, Super Mega Drive, whatever, um, and I think the Switch also. I have it for the PlayStation Three, but you play as the a rookie, and there's a couple of things that were introduced in it. You remember the hotel from the first movie? Yes. You revisit that hotel. Oh, Johnny Thrill. Uh huh. And State Puff comes back. So that's a whole level within itself. Oh yeah, that's a whole level. You also go back to the library. Oh wow. The the very first scene in the movie. Yeah. And part of the story is dealing with finding out who killed the librarian. <clears throat> no, because it it yeah. has everything to do with what's going on in New York City. Um, I mean it it it's really in depth. I mean. I'll have it to, fills in a lot of gaps. Oh yeah, in, that, in the story. Um, I will. I'll have to boot it up one day, Dad, and I'll start from the beginning. Yeah. Uh, I mean, you, you'll enjoy just watching the story. I mean, because there's dialogue as you're playing. You know. Wow. Yeah. I mean, it's. I remember that opening, and you know, you always kind of wonder, well, you know, no ghost and all, but what was behind it, and, and what yeah. happened. Yeah, the, 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 there's a whole story behind her, um, and it ha- and it had all the original cast come back, voicing their their roles, even the, you know, uh, even the redheaded guy, you know who I'm talking about. Oh yeah, even he came back. Uh, <laughs> yeah, even the guy who voiced Vigo came back. And Vigo was the villain of the second movie. Yeah. But today we're going to talk about the um, the movie called Ghostbusters Afterlife. So now we will get started on that, which takes place 30-something years later after the second movie. Uh, so, that's, so that's why I sit there and said we don't know if, the, if, the, if they're going to include the video game or not. I'm hoping with some people behind it, like Dan Aykroyd, they might mention it, because, I mean, that, that could be a whole thing in itself, right there. But, um, this has nothing to do with the 2016 uh, movie, uh, it just deals with the first two movies, and it deals, if you guys seen the trailers, uh, it deals with Egon's grandkids. Who get transported out of the mole. Uh, nowhere. Yeah, but for Egon to do something like that, he had a reason for it because yes. Egon, he wasn't, he was very much, he could live like a hermit in a, in a big sense. I know he could, uh, as long as he had enough power and just basic food <clears throat> rations, he could live out there and, uh, because 
he was a he was a scientist. He was a pure scientist. Well, he was a freaking genius. Oh yeah. Well, that was also one of the whole things with the original movie is everyone thinks Peter Venkman is not smart, but he's actually a doctor. Yeah. And a lot of people forget that that Peter Venkman is a uh, scientist. Mm-hmm. I'm trying to remember what what. Uh, da, da, da. We'll have to look that one up. I'm looking it up right now. Yeah, because uh, Ray is a um, is a doctor too, and so is uh. He has to do with physics and uh, trying to remember what else. Uh, da, 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 I don't care. We're not talking about medical doctors. People were talking about uh, scientific types. Uh, he's a parapsychological. Uh, uh, and holds a PhD in both parapsychologically and psychology. Well, you know, that, that makes a lot of sense because always in uh, the Ghostbusters TV, the real Ghostbusters TV, he was always sitting there and was psychological, analyzing certain things. You know, well, it's this, 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 and this. Yeah. So he was looking for a, not only a paranormal aspect, but he was also look, also breaking it down psychologically, like a normal person. Yeah, how's this going to affect? Right. What is the cause and the effect? Uh, Ray was an expert of paranormal history and meta uh, meta lorology. Basically, uh, chemical compounds and stuff like that, how they break down and stuff. Uh, that and how the chemicals react to each other. He was a chemist. Yeah. Uh, of course, Egon, you know, I don't know how. Um, of course, parapsych- uh, psychology. Um, Let's see. Oh yeah, quantum. Yeah, because he he did talk about the quantum realm and everything. He was also a big, uh, a big who. Uh, hold on. Yeah, he was also one of those. He corrupted like spores, molds, and fungus. Uh, that type of stuff. Uh. Yeah, because he was the main person behind the proton packs and yeah. how to hold that. So, I mean, he would have to have a, a quantum, quantum um, physics. Yeah. And I didn't know that Winston was a doctor, too. All that stuff dealing with it. You have to have something in electrical engineering. Well, he was, in, he was an Air Force major. Yeah. Oh, oh uh, no! Oh, that's uh, hold on. Uh, when's that more for uh the 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 movie? Da, 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 attempt to deal with the scenes. Da, 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 da. I'm trying to concept of creation. Uh real ghost when I had some drink. They don't say what he has a degree in. Uh, Oh, I'm looking. Oh, here it is. Occupation. Um, oh, he's an Egyptologist. Archaeology. Well, I mean, he and knew a lot of... Concentration in Egyptology. Well, because uh, Egypt did a lot of stuff with the paranormal and, link, and believe it or not, the Egyptians, yeah. uh, all that stuff does connect to a lot of other cultures, believe yeah, it or other, not. Other mythos. In the Western world. Dang, I forgot how intelligent Ghostbusters actually was. Um, but <laughs> getting on to it, wasn't trying to uh, get off topic or anything. But uh, it's the grandson and granddaughter of um, Egon Spangler, uh, which also is uh, Janine. If you guys don't know, she was a secretary and she had a thing for Egon. And we ain't talking about... Um, 
the relationship between the nerd little guy in the second movie. Mm-hmm. Oh, and they also explain... No, well, well, they could explain a little bit of Ghostbusters, the real Ghostbusters, they do it right. Because they're saying the reason why Janine's personality kind of changed to more bubbly and everything, because she was possessed by a, uh, by a ghost. Yeah. And in like one of the last episodes of Extreme Ghostbusters, they got rid of the ghost and she turned back to normal. Yeah. Wow. Well, they they kind of hinted at that. Mm-hmm. Um... It, it's it, um, I don't know how they're going to um how they're gonna I don't they'll probably do something for Ernie Hudson not Ernie Hudson but um Harold Ram Harold Ramis in the movie but uh Carrie Coon plays the single mother uh and daughter of the late Doctor Egon Spangler uh McKean Grace uh is the granddaughter Finn Wolfhand as Trevor's as the son, you got Paul Rudd as the kind of like the school teacher. Uh, you know, well, Paul Rudd, it, it, he's a good actor. Yes, but like I said, it, it kind of feels the whole thing like they're also setting it up for a new generation in a sense. Like I, I could easily sit there and see them turn it. With everything going on, like the earthquake shaking, oh, we saw from the first trailer, and then we see the second trailer talking about the apocalypse. I saw some of the very much same theor the not besides the special effects, but theoretical way it looked compared to when the end of the world happened, supposedly in the first film. Yeah, that too, and that was the reason why Egon was there. He had picked up something earlier. On the equipment. Mm-hmm. And it came across, and then what we saw in the trailer, some of the same stuff like they showed like they were in New York. And then the 1980s was like The Walking Dead, you know. Which yeah, exactly. I feel like with Even this... down to the plasma under the street. Oh, yeah. Well, you might want to scoot a little bit closer to the mic, if you can Oh, uh, the one thing I will sit there and say what I like is not only, um, it feels like a spiritual successor to the original series. It's not disrespecting where it came from. Yes, it's a younger group of people. We would love to see all the original people together. I know people, a lot of people have been complaining about that for years. Um, but if done right, this could easily start up a whole franchise. The franchise Re back. Reboot the whole franchise. I mean, I'm. Well, I can see that. I mean, he goes into the barn and finds. Ecto 1. Ecto, Ecto 1. Ecto 1. Oh, yeah. I mean. <laughs> yeah, that's. One car everybody would not have mind having as a kid in the <laughs> 80s yeah. or early 90s. Exactly. Uh, of course, they don't realize just how powerful it is what all that's outfitted with. Of course, I'm sure they're going to learn. Oh, yeah. Um, and they're going to expand upon it and expand upon it. You can already see some improvements that they, they're making. Mm-hmm. Especially with the ghost trap. That's, that's cool. Oh, the little robo ghost trap, the, the, the wheelie one? Yeah. Well, I mean, the, the, that that's smart. We no, that's, that's right up Egon's alley. Yeah. Uh, we know that that monster they were chasing at the beginning was not Slimer. Uh, no. But. Slimer type. Mm-hmm. Uh, I will say this, though, is one thing I really like is, even though I know a lot of people say, like, the effects seem older, and it, I know what most people, I, I've talked to a couple of friends like that, you know, um, it just has a different feel to it than what I've seen in other other things like like the. So why can't it go back to the original? I mean, you know, it's they're using original type equipment. And it no, won't. no, I mean, but I'm t I'm talking about how the special effects overall. Overall, I know oh, I know a lot yeah. of people say that it has an older feel to it, but it looks more genuine now. I mean, yeah, doing more realistic. Like, I hear these kids wind up in grandpa's 
house and whatnot, and they find all his old equipment when he was a Ghostbuster. Well, it, yeah, and here's a, uh, I wasn't, I'm not even talking about that, but now I get where you're coming from. I'm talking about how they're even using the same, basically it looks like they're using the same technique on the special effects that they kind of, making it look like it did in the the previous two films, the, the first two that. films. Nothing wrong with that. But using the modern technology and, and making it smoother. It doesn't look, okay, it doesn't look as animated. Uh, it doesn't look as... It uh, looks more natural. That's the word I was looking for. Yeah, uh, I can visualize what you're talking about, animated. Just a little bit choppy. Or car- too cartoony. I mean, cartoony, so, I mean, yeah. so, I mean, that was the whole thing. It was like, when we heard about the Ghostbusters movie in 2016, and then we saw the trailer, and I was just like, God, it just looks hard. Ew. I mean, ew, you know. Really people. That's... Oh, I'm sorry. The, the, the trailer of that film where the girl licks her two proton pistol blasters. Uh, me and Priest talk about that all the time. She did. Because all that radiation coming from it, we're like, that ain't very smart. No, no, no. It's like walking into a reactor and picking up radioactive material and swallowing it. <sighs> well. Well, uh, huh, okay. Huh, I did not know that. Uh, seems that the movie, the original third movie, became the video game. Yeah. Uh, I mean, that's really what it looks like. Uh, this, uh, sorry, I was reading a little thing on it. But no, I mean, this movie, though, has also been delayed. It was originally supposed to come out last summer. And it was supposed to come out earlier this year, and they delayed it, which I think they did that because, you know, Bob and all that other stuff. But, uh, it, the 19th here in the United States, which I am, I'm looking forward to it. Now, one thing also I noticed is that I kind of got a feeling they're going to bring back Gozer, or is it just me? They could. I know they can't bring the same actress who played Gozer, but Gozer is a, uh, a shapeshift. Like most of the, uh, most of the ghosts could shapeshift. Yes. Let's see. What well, I mean, I'm, I'm. Is there anything? No, I'm, I'm waiting. I'm sure they're gonna bring Slimer back. Oh yeah, no, Slimer's kind of one of the go uh, go to mascots. I mean, he he's very much of a a good marketing tool. Not to have Slimer, it will make everybody mad. Uh, yeah. I don't. I know that Dan Aykroyd's gonna be in it. We we hear his say we're we're closed uh, at the end of the second trailer. Uh, Bill Murray is going to be on, uh, be in it, which thank goodness, you know, I know sometimes Bill Murray can be a little bit of a jerk on wanting to do certain things sometimes. Like he wants to walk away from Ghostbusters. I'm sitting like, I, I, I don't know. Uh, Ernie Hudson would do it in a heartbeat. And we, we met him at that convention. He sat there and said, oh yeah, they have a new movie. I'll do it in a heartbeat. I don't care if I'm a hundred years old. I'll do a Ghostbusters film. You know? Yeah. Uh, and turn. Oh Yeah. At least met him about a decade. Yeah, they show Janine's in it. Yeah, Janine's in it. Janine I don't. Potts. I don't know. Uh, I do know um, Lewis will not be in it. Uh, they're kind of attorney and everything. Yeah. He won't be in it. Uh, he, he. He. He's been so away from the Hollywood scene. He. He just. And everything. Uh, you know who I'm talking about, right? Yeah. Uh, God, what was his name? Um. He did, Honey, I Shrunk the Kids. Uh, Ray Morales. Rick Moranis. Rick Moranis, I said. Yeah. Uh, yeah, he, uh, 
I think the last film he did was Flintstones. Because mm-hmm. his wife died of cancer and he... Uh... Well, he was a perfect party. Oh, yeah. Uh, well, when his I know when his wife died of cancer, he quit doing that and raised his kids. Became a, a responsible adult. Take care of your children. Mm-hmm. But if you don't, somebody else will. And you might not like who it is. Well, I do know that... I know he got attacked last year. I remember that. Like, he yeah. got... Uh, everyone was in a... Oh, God, there were so many... I remember so many people were in an uproar about that. I mean, there's people looking at videos of, like, trying to find this guy. I mean... I don't know. They ever caught the guy. Don't know. Well, I just what saw in the trailers. Kids are going to be kids, and then things are going to start happening, and somebody's going to have to step it up. Oh yeah, I think I think what's going to happen is is from what I can tell of it. Oh yeah, the guy was uh, arrested. Um, the grandson is going to be he's going to have a big role to play because he's. I think he's going to be the one who's going to stumble into stuff. Where the grand, you know, the granddaughter is going to yeah. be like, "Hey, you know, w- w- you know, th- this is what Grandpa did." I think there's going to be that little bit of sibling, like, you know, you're weird and all this other stuff, and you know, of course, she doesn't want the only one who can mess with his sister is him. You know, anybody hurts his little sister, you know, that's taboo. Yeah, you're gonna get him. Friend, uh, everyone, I have friends who have little sisters, and they sit there and say, "No, I don't want a lot to pick on." My little sister is me. Anyone else, I'll hurt them. So, I'll, I'm hoping the movie does good. I, I mean, I know there's a, a big thing about it. It's a good, fa- it's a good movie. A lot everyone can take their family to go see. Well, I uh, can't wait to see it. Oh, see, I, see how they're going to reintroduce all the characters. All the characters. Oh, we're going open at night. I. I think the grandkids are going to get in trouble and the original team's going to have to help come bail them out. Now, um... That's just... Oh, I I'm know. I'm throwing that out there. I hope it's in IMAX 3D. Oh, yeah. I hope it's in 3D. That'd be fabulous. Now, I, I'm the type of person, though, uh, we might go see it in IMAX mm-hmm. and then we might go see it if, it, if it's like regular 3D. We, we, we might, you know week or two later go see it in regular th- you know 3D because mm-hmm. yeah I, I'm well a movie like that you can see it twice and the second time you see it after a couple of weeks wow I missed that you oh. pick up on a lot of stuff that you you saw it but it didn't register as the old saying goes oh yeah so didn't click bingo let's see what else is going on that's all I can think of today for uh, for this one um yeah, I'm just excited. Oh, I know, I know, I am too. I'm, I'm wondering. I mean, the, the people that are doing it, I know they can act because, like, uh, you know, the main guy he was in, um, Stranger Things, which funny is there's a Halloween episode I do know, and the uh, some of the main characters they're wearing Ghostbuster outfits. <laughs> So, I know, like, in an interview, Joe goes, yeah, so we're shooting, like, you know, the first season of Stranger Things, you know, we were in Ghostbusters, stuff because it's set in the 80s, and here I am, I'm in a Ghostbusters film, you know, a couple years later, you know, he, he said to say, sit there and tell me that I'd be in a Ghostbusters film after doing that, you know, uh, I don't know, the, the cast looks good. I mean, I, I'm really. I hate to say it, but it had a little bit of a Disney feel to it. It did have. Just a little. Just a little, but I don't think Sony's going for that. No. I think uh, because the director of it um, is Jason Rittman. Uh and it's, uh, he's actually one of the writers, too. This one was uh, written by Jason Rittman and uh, Gil Galane, who's a... Uh, but 
you know, uh, what a lot of people don't realize is uh, Jason Rittman, uh, he's done a couple other things. Uh, well, his father is uh, is the producer. <laughs> Nothing like keeping it in the family. And here's the whole thing. His dad directed the first two films. Yeah. So for him, you know, it, it you don't think you don't think it's his dad family thing. Yeah, well, I mean family thing, you don't think his dad won't tell him, you know, flat out, No, this this ain't good. You got to redo this. I mean, really for Jason Ritman, this could really make or break his career. Yeah. Uh and so I'm hoping it does good. Um I'm loving also, I guess the, I guess one thing is, besides they're using the original sound effects, you know, like like you heard the original, ring ring, you know, from uh, Ecto, one. Yeah. Ecto One. Not only that, you heard the the proton charging up and all that type of stuff. Is the music? It it has that that classical music, and I feel like they're probably gonna have a little bit of the type of jazz music it was in the first two films. Oh, that would be great. Uh, I, I'm hoping they have the original theme in it. Yeah. Because I'm sorry, the, 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 the original theme is just... Classic. It, yeah, it's synonymous with Ghostbuster. I mean, they, they pretty much... They did a different version of it for the TV series, but there's no way you can sit there and have that movie without having that play. Not at least one time. Oh, yeah. Uh, da, 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 da. I like the fact they got Paul Rudd in it, though. I mean, he, he's a good... He's a good character actor. No, he is. Yeah, uh, he's real good. Um, you know what his first movie was? Uh-huh. A lot of people think it was Clueless. What was it? Um, well, alright. Let me correct that. The first movie that came out that he did was Clueless. Okay? Yeah. But... Before he went on set for Clueless, he finished up everything for Halloween, The Curse of Michael Myers. That was the first film he actually did, but it came out second. Okay, it came out after the other one, but well, he had already made it. He, he already okay. did all his stuff on it. Yeah. Yeah, he's just 52. Yeah. Uh... But yeah, uh, he, I, I think he was perfect for the role. He, 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 I guess with him being the connection between the, the older generation and the younger generation, I guess is the best way to yeah. put it. Mm-hmm. So, um, we'll just have to see. I mean, this is one of many Sony films that are coming out, um, or or out right now. I mean, the other film right now is. Venom, Let There Be Carnage, which has almost made all of its money back uh, last weekend. So, <laughs> And everybody wanted to fail. So it will make its money back this weekend. Uh, I think I, I usually see that one making over 200 plus. Yeah. Um, if you haven't seen it, you go see it. It's... Yeah, no, it, it's good. It's As a friend of ours sat there and said, especially if you're a Spider-Man Venom fan, you will love this movie. Yes. Uh, let's see. Mm-hmm. Let's see. Can't think of anything else. Can you? No, sir, I cannot. Okay, everybody, please like and subscribe to us here at Nurse with the Cause. It really does help us out. We also have a Facebook page. I don't know what we're going to talk about on Wednesday or, or and everything. We'll figure it out. Yeah. Now we're going to talk about Halloween since we're going to go see Halloween next Ooh, week. Yeah. So, everyone, we'll do a quick review of Halloween. Uh, the. All the stuff on that gets you all confused and everything because Halloween Kills comes out next Friday, and it looks good. Yes, it'd be my birthday too. Woohoo! I'm gonna be old. <laughs> I don't yeah. want to think. Of that. I don't want to think about that. Uh, <laughs> uh, that's depressing. 
Okay, everybody, have a wonderful rest of your Saturday. Be safe out there. And you got anything to say real quick? No, sir, do not. All right, we are out.